the first section is for one polynomial functions and graphs. We're going to take a little uh, look at different kind of functions besides the ones we've been dealing with, quadratics, linears, absolute values. We're going to take a look at what happens when that power gets to be a little bigger. And um, we have a generic polynomial function defined as p of x. And here are the terms in a generic setup where I've got these ans and then this an minus 1 and then a1 and a0. The a values with the little subscripts just refer to coefficients. And then you have the variables and their respective powers. Those refer to um, the degree. They help determine the degree of our function. So we're going to set this thing up in what we call descending power order. So we'll start with the highest degree and work ourselves down. A um, couple things here. Coefficient can't be equal to zero. That just means it loses. That, that term just disappears. And um, yeah, there we go. A sub zero. Sub zero things usually refer to a constant down there. All right, so identifying what the degree of the polynomial is. First, a little review on polynomials. The polynomial has to have real coefficients, and it must have whole number exponents. So we have each of these polynomials, px, rx, and sx. We're looking for the degree. First thing you're going to want to make sure that you've done, you've done is put this thing in descending order because it's so easy to just look at the very first term in the series and the uh, polynomial and start to think about degree. Well, it might not be in descending order. So put it in order first, and then you can find the degree. The degree happens to do with the largest power, or in some cases, the summation of powers if you're talking about different bases with different powers, like in S of X, we have a situation that, that that's happening in. So for this first one, degree of 3, we have a third degree function. We're gonna, we've already talked about um, a little bit kind of what the graphs look like for these things. The end behaviors and what's going on in between we'll talk about in this chapter. And the R of X function, we have a fifth degree function. Notice that we're missing some powers. We're missing an x squared power between the x cubed and the negative 10 constant. And that's okay. It's still a fifth degree function. And then this other one here, uh, we go back to thinking about binomial expansion, Pascal's triangle. Um, when you have different bases, and each of those bases have their own powers. Um, when this is a product like this, what you do to determine the, the degree is you add those powers together. So this is actually a fifth degree. And then here we have x to the first y squared, adding those two together gives me a power of 3. So fifth degree function for this one as well. So there's a few terms we're going to throw at you, so new terms. We've already uh, taken a look at x-intercepts, and that's where we um, are crossing our x-axis. When we solve a polynomial by plugging some value in for x and getting p of x, then we have solutions. And when our p of x is equal to 0 and we're solving for x's at that point, then we have what are known as roots. So we have a couple terms that are synonymous. We have zeros of a function where p of x equals 0 it is also a solution. The values of x that make equal p of x equals 0, also known as roots. And then at zeros, there are also your x-intercepts. I put a new bag in it, in, in that can, and that's something that can never keep up. Yeah. All right. And eventually what we're going to learn about 
In regards to roots, is uh, sometimes our roots can be imaginary. But we're not there yet. All right. Remember back to the day when you learned long division? Well, we're going to do a little bit of that now with regards to polynomials. And we can divide one polynomial into another when you use the process of long division. So we're going to probably need a little refresher on that. Here we have our first polynomial of 5 plus 4x cubed minus 3x being divided by the binomial of 2x minus 3. So we have a third degree polynomial being divided by a first degree polynomial. So we should end up with a quotient that's going to be second degree. Here's what we do. First, we're going to put everything in descending order and insert any zeros for missing terms. So what that means is, in our 5 plus 4x, 3 minus 3x, we put that in descending order. We got 4x to the third. And then I have nothing for 0 for x squared, so I'm going to stick a 0x squared in here. Then we have a minus 3x as a first degree. And then we'll put our constant at the end. And going back to the old days where we think about division, we've got to put our little division box here. And then out the front, we're going to be dividing by 2x minus 3. All right, just with long division, same thing that we did with long division, we figured out this right here is known as the divisor. And inside of here, we have the dividend. And we're going to get an answer up here that's known as the quotient. And then we may or may not get a remainder. So we're trying to figure out how does 2x minus 3 go into this 4x cubed plus 0x squared minus 3x plus 4. It's like with long division. You've got a divisor out here trying to figure out what would I need to, or how close can I take that divisor and multiply it by something and get close to what's in the, uh, the dividends place. So what we're going to do, what we always uh, think about doing, is think about the leading term here. We want a 4. And I want to think about how can I make a 2 become a 4. But I also want to think about the power. So how can I make an x to the first power become an x to the third? Well, I can make the 2 become a 4 by multiplying by 2. So we're going to stick a 2 right there. And I can make the x power become an x to the third power by multiplying it by x squared. And now what happens is this 2x squared multiplies by this binomial divisor. And we get a 4x cubed minus a 6x squared. Then, in long division, what we did is we, we subtracted this. So if you have 4x cubed minus 4x cubed, you get nothing. We want those x cubed to cancel. 0x squared plus 6x squared would make 6x squared. And then we drop the next term, just like with long division. Then we go through that process again, but now we're thinking about how do I make this 2x become a 6x squared? Well, that would mean we'd have to multiply by a 3x, and now we do this process again. So the 3x, let's move this out of the way here. So now the 3x multiplies by the 2x, 3x multiplies by the 3, and I get 6x squared minus 9x. And once again, we're going to subtract that. And I'll get 6x squared minus 6x squared, negative 3x plus 9x is 6x's. Let's go red now. 6x's. And here comes the constant term, plus 5. And then once again, what do I do to 2x to make it look like a 6x, make it become a 6x? Well, I take 2x and I multiply it by a 3. And now we do that process again, 3 times 2x, 6x, 3 times negative 3, negative 9. We're 
subtracting this again, and I get a 5 plus a 9 or a 14 as a remainder. Now, there's nothing else to drop down, so that becomes my remainder value. So how would we write this? The answer to this is, again, this part right here is the quotient. Then we have our remainder. So we would, a couple different ways we could write this. We could say the answer is 2x squared plus 3x plus 3 with a remainder of 14. So there's our, our answer from, from dividing 4x cubed plus um, or minus 3x plus 5 divided by 2x minus 3. You can also divide it, show the answer like this, to get our original dividend, 4x cubed minus 3x plus 5 was being divided by 2x minus 3, and what resulted was 2x squared plus a 3x plus a 3 plus a remainder of 14 over x, 2x minus 3. There's a way of expressing the remainder as a quotient of the divisor. So that's another way of writing this. All right, let's go try a couple notes, a couple more. Let you guys uh, figure out, do we have any spaces here we need to fill in? Anything missing? Everything's in descending order. We go three, two, and then one, power-wise, and then we are missing a constant here. So we'll go ahead and just stick a plus zero on here and extend our extend our line out a little bit. Same thing. What am I going to do to 3x to make it become 9x cubed? I'm going to multiply that by 3x squared. And then that 3x squared multiplied by 3x and negative 4. 9x cubed minus 12x squared. And I'm going to make sure I'm subtracting this. So it's 6x plus 12x, which is 18x squared. And negative 30x drops down. Do the same process. What am I going to do to 3x to make it look like 18x squared? To make it become 18x squared, I'm going to multiply by another 6x. So I have now 18x squared minus 24x. Subtracting once again. 30 plus, 20, negative 30 plus 24 is a negative 6x. And then there's nothing else to drop down except the 0. And then now what do I do to 3x to make it become a negative 6x? I multiply it by negative 2. And I get negative 6x, which really we're subtracting that thing, and it becomes a remainder now of 0. So here we have a remainder of 0, which we could just get our quotient. So then the answer to this thing would be 3x squared plus 6x with no remainder. What happens, though, when both of those two examples we've used, the binomial that we're dividing with, what happens when our divisor is a trinomial or something other than a first degree? So here we have this fourth degree function of x cubed, x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 15x squared minus 9x plus 1 being divided now by a quadratic. Well, it sets up the same way. Everything is in descending order already. And now we're going to divide this thing by 
and x squared minus 4x plus that 1. Same process, though. Leading term become leading term. So x squared needs to get multiplied by another x squared. To become an x to the 4. So we're going to stick my x squared there above the x squared. And I get x to the 4 minus 4x cubed plus x squared. And remember that this is subtracting. So I get negative 7 plus 4x, which is negative 3x cubed. 15x squared minus an x squared is a 14x squared. And then here comes the negative 9x that drops down. Then what am I going to do to x squared to make it become negative 3x cubed? I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3x. Negative 3x cubed plus 12x squared minus 3x. Once again, subtracting. 14 minus 12 is 2x squared. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6x. And the 1 constant drops down. What am I going to do to 2x two, two squared to make it become a 2x squared? I'm going to multiply it by a 2. This becomes then 2x squared minus 8x plus 2, subtracting. We get negative 6 plus 8, plus eight is 2x's. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Nothing else to drop down, which means this is my remainder. x squared minus 3x plus 2 with a remainder of 2x minus 1. All right, your turn. You try these and we'll be back with the answers. All right, here's your answers for those first two worked out. And then we'll uh, do the last one here together. So we have a b squared minus 6b minus a 9 being divided by b minus 3. b needs to become a b squared by multiplying by b. b squared minus 3b, subtracting those and we get a negative 3b minus a 9. Minus 3 becomes negative 3b plus a 9. And now we're subtracting those, and I get a negative 18 as a remainder. So my answer for this one would be b minus 3 with a remainder of negative 18. That's it for this section. We're going to continue with this tomorrow with taking a look at synthetic division, another way of being able to divide, to divide a polynomial by a binomial that's a linear binomial. So long division can work with any divisor, but synthetic division that we look at tomorrow will only work when we're divided by a linear polynomial, and we'll check in with that 